Hello, welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, Registered Dental Assistant here at Gladwell Dental. We're so glad you're here today because in this episode, this guy is taking us to school. We're going to school. We're going to school and the subject matter, here it is. In many states, dental assistants can now take digital scans. That's right. Now, not every state. Not every state. Florida, for example, mm -hmm. doesn't quite yet allow dental assistants or hygienists sometimes mm -hmm. to scan intraorally. So, check with your local state's regulations before performing any procedure that I do here today. Today, however, we're going to use the Itero Element 2 scanner yep. to get a patient acquisition from start and then scan the lower arch for a pretreatment scan. Great. Did you hear that? It was the bell. I hear it. Class, class is in session. Welcome to Itero School. Class is in session. Let's talk today about pretreatment scanning. Now, this could be for the patient's initial visit to your office or a scan to record information for study models, wax models, Invisalign treatments, or even appliances such as sports guards and night guards. Now, even though this video series is meant to be an introduction to those of you who have never interacted with the Itero element before, it's also a basic skills refresher course for anyone with iTero experience, but the need to develop their skills just a little more. I've got a lot of information to throw at you, so let's get started today with the basics of entering patient information, and then we'll complete a lower arch scan. Let's take a look at the home screen. The four basic menu boxes that are presented allow you to acquire a new scan, look up patients that have been previously entered, review orders that are already scanned and sent, and to check messages sent by a line for general communication purposes. I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible for today's presentation and start by talking only about the new scan and existing patient options. So, if the scan is going to be taken on an existing patient of record in your iTero system, click on the patient's menu box and then either scroll through the patient list or click on the search bar and type the patient's name to find them. If they don't happen to be listed here and you need to back out of this menu and enter them manually for the first time, simply click on the small menu icon in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and return to the main menu. Our patient today is a brand new patient. I'm selecting the new scan option. I'm going to allow it to load and then I'm filling in all their information on this drop-down menu. Some of this information is required and that's designated with a small red asterisk next to the option. Other information, such as the chart number, are optional, but can assist in records location if you really need it. Since we are scanning a patient pre-treatment today, I'm changing the case type to restorative. This option will allow you to send this case to the lab for a variety of pre-treatment needs that I mentioned earlier. Due dates are set at a standard two-week turnaround time unless you change that manually for rush cases. Uh, then I'm going to designate this scan to be sent to Gladwell Dental Lab as the recipient. Now, the most important step here is to click on the pretreatment scan box rather than to leave that area blank. This is telling the iTero that no teeth are being selected for treatment and no additional information needs to be entered on the tooth by tooth basis. Any specific instruction at this point can be entered in the notes section below the chart. I want you to be as detailed as you'd like to be while entering these notes. There's no such thing as adding too much collateral info while explaining treatment requests. Let's get started with this live patient example and talk about seating position and wand technique. It is important to feel comfortable while scanning. The more I am straining while performing a scan, the more I'm going to start to get fatigued. My preferred position is roughly 12 o'clock in relation to the patient's body, and I'll position the scanner either to my left or right at uh, 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock respectively. I'm holding the scanning wand in my dominant hand with my palm and fingers facing upwards. This initial hand posture is exactly the same whether I'm scanning the upper or the lower arch. My opposite hand is always standing by to retract, to suction, to provide a fulcrum, or even act as a stabilizing guide. I prefer to scan without the distraction of cheek retractors, mouth mirrors, props, or even suction devices that aren't meant to enter and exit the mouth pretty quickly. I uh, almost prefer to be proficient scanning on my own. I'm sure many RDAs who will be performing scans can relate you will most likely be operating without the assistance of another staff member. However, in extreme cases, don't hesitate to ask another assistant, a hygienist, or even your own patient to help with retraction or saliva control. I typically choose the mandibular arch to begin a full mouth scan, similar to the reasons why we start with a lower full mouth impression, and this is to simply build the patient's confidence in the process. 
As you can see, I have the lower arch selected on the left-hand menu. I did this by just pressing on the image of the lower arch. Saliva bubbles and any debris can be removed with an air blast and continued throughout the procedure if you need to. Starting distal to the most posterior tooth in the arch, I'm going to initiate the scan by tapping on one of the buttons found on each side of the wand. On this first pass, I'm attempting to acquire occlusal records only. This patient does have both third molars present, so it's really up to you which side to begin with and feel the most comfortable. As I'm wrapping around to the anterior of this arch, I need to stay more lingually inclined rather than looking straight down at the incisal edges. We're going to come back and recapture the incisal edge details later. A little side-to-side -side motion while moving along the occlusal surfaces of the molars helps the wand to easily move past the cheeks and the lips, especially if you're getting hung up there. Now once you've made it all the way around the arch, go ahead and just stop the scan by again tapping one of the buttons found on the side of the wand. I just want to review what we've already scanned up to this point. And I'll tip and turn the scan here to show all of the red areas that have yet to be acquired. When manipulating the scan on screen, there are a couple options you have to view all angles of the scan. Using one finger, moving around on the screen will rotate the scan on its axis without actually moving it around from its centered position. Holding two fingers on the screen will allow the scan to move to a new location, however the scan is not going to tip and turn. Similar to viewing an image on a touch screen like your smartphone, using two fingers in an opening or pinching motion will cause the scan to enlarge or to minimize. I'm going to zoom in on this portion just for a moment and show the involvement here of the cheek and the tongue in the occlusal scan that we took. I'm not worried about these interferences at all because uh, as we go about our lingual and buccal scans, they're automatically going to be scanned out. So starting once again from the distal of the most posterior tooth on each side, I'm going to scan the lingual next. However, I need the scanner to recognize where I am and pick up the previous scan where I left off. So, I'll start on the occlusal surface first, scan for a few seconds, and wait until the old and new data meshes together. Now once the previous scan appears on screen, I can turn the wand to the lingual and start to move it around the arch. I'm most concerned about scanning the embrasures and undercut areas of the lingual now. As you can see, I have turned the wand so it faces almost straight up to the ceiling and I will twist it, with both hands if I need to, laterally left and right as I move along this arch. Don't be nervous to make bold movements to capture these hard to reach areas. If there is any advice I can give to enhance your effectiveness during scanning, it's to always make bold and purpose driven smooth movements. Now that I'm coming around to the distal lingual of the opposite side, I'm going to stop the scan once again and review it to make sure there are no missed spots. This scan looks clean, so I can continue to the buckle. For the buckle scan, I'm going to do it a quadrant at a time and stop at the midline. Starting from the distal of the most posterior tooth in the arch, I'll once again scan the occlusal until the previous scan meshes together. Now that the full image is displayed, the wand rocks to the buckle and moves towards the midline, staying as close to the teeth as possible. To reach the difficult interproximal areas here, instead of the twisting method we used on the lingual, I'm going to lift the tail end of the wand up and down while progressing towards the stopping point at the midline. Just taking a quick look here before moving to the adjacent arch, and everything looks to be in order, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. Now I'm always starting on the flat occlusal surface, allowing the scans to mesh, and then I move along the buckle in the same fashion towards the midline. Give every segment a quick check to make sure you get the right information recorded. The last bit of info that you need to scan for full arches are the incisal edges. You are always going to make this the last step after all other services are completed. All we need to do here is rock the wand, buckle the lingual over the incisal edges. Once on the right and once on the left to capture the edge details. Like I keep saying, I still want to start on a flatter posterior surface to help the wand mesh the scans together. Maybe just start on the bicuspids until the mesh happens and then rock the wand, buckle the lingual, moving towards the midline. Make this scan last no more than three to five seconds and then review the final scan to make sure it's complete. While reviewing the final scan, here's an option that I like to take advantage of. Since I've been looking at the same grayscale image for so long, it helps to give my eyes some relief and change the image appearance to the high definition view. I do this by clicking on the view button located just to the lower left of the tooth chart. Now we have more of a gingival color contrasted against a natural tooth color. I prefer to scan in the grayscale mode, but it really is up to you whether you choose one or the other. 
Remember, when it comes to performing scans properly, your comfort level directly translates to the best possible outcome. Thank you, Will. That was a great class. Megan, I'm so glad we weren't tardy for that. Mm -hmm. But stay tuned because in the next episode, I've got so much more information. We're going to continue with the same patient, an upper arch scan, okay. and a bite registration, and send this case on to the lab. All right. I'll be waiting. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> so for today's episode, that wraps it up. On behalf of everyone here at Glywell Dental, thank you so much for watching. And we'll meet you right back here next time.